Hello, Hard Video Order Stuff, welcome back. And today for you, whoo, I've got a kick-ass video for you. I thought you guys might find it interesting for me to explore the best way to expose S-Log2 and S-Log3 for the best looking, glowing, accurate skin tones. And I'll show you how I went from this to this. Just a little tech waffle and then we'll get straight into it. My first step is to switch to a linear gamma like Cine 2 to start with and I'm going to set my ISO to 400. You may be wondering why. Well, the reason is because although S-Log2 and 3 have much higher native ISOs, usually around 1600, and they're both logarithmic gammas, 400 ISO would be roughly their linear gamma equivalent. So in theory, when we switch to log and we're forced to use that higher 1600 ISO will be at the native ISO and hopefully in good shape. Very boring techie waffle but I hope it makes sense and now moving on. This is what I started with with just the house lights on and it's looking not that great. So let's go ahead and get our lighting on so we can start exposing it properly. So in this case I set my ISO to 400 and then I expose my image using both the power of the lights and my aperture. I'm using a simple lighting setup of just a large diffused light on camera left and then just a low budget spotlight for the hair light. Of course I used the waveform tool that's in my small HD focus monitor. I really wanted to make sure my skin tones were somewhere around 40 to 50% absolute maximum. That way I know that there's less likelihood of banding or blown highlights or noisy shadows. As always, I make sure I shoot a clip with a grey card visible. To me, this shot looks a little bit warm, so I'm going to correct it with the white balance plugin. Don't trust your camera's sensor to auto white balance for you people, you know what's best. Now switching over to S-Log2, and I can tell just from looking at it that that is going to be a great exposure. At this point, you really want to ignore what your camera is telling you because it will be metering it at between one and two stops overexposed, but this is log we're dealing with and the rules are different, so just ignore that, this is a great exposure. I've done some forward planning here and I know that I'm going to be using a LUT when I come to grade this shot. So what I've done is I've preloaded a LUT into my small HD focus monitor. So whilst I was filming I was able to preview my LUT on top of my footage and really plan ahead for the look I was going for. Super handy. Now I'm really happy with this exposure so let's now jump into our editing software so we can grade this footage. The first plugin I add to almost every single grade is my Color Wheels plugin. We're not actually going to do anything to it straight away, I want to add a few more things and then we'll come back to it. Next I want to stretch out that footage, add some contrast, I'm going to do that by using the Color Curves plugin. I usually like a really intricate curve but in this case I'm going to go with a really simple S curve because it's going to be really gentle on the highlights and the shadows. I'm not going to go too nuts with it because I'm aware that I'm about to add a LUT which will add more contrast on top of what I've already done. The LUT I'm going to use is obviously the same LUT I used to monitor my footage on my small HD monitor. I'm going to go for the Drive LUT by Triune Films which I really like because the skin tones are quite natural but then it ends up being quite nice and punchy and contrasty at the same time. As always, I like my LUTs to be dialed back to about 50%. That works nicely for me. And just to make things pop, I'm going to add a little bit of saturation to the midtones, and then I'm going to add some more warmth to the midtones and actually cool down the shadows just a tiny bit. And just to get that really glowing skin tone look, I'm going to add an instance of SCPFX Skin Smoother plugin, which I love. I use it all the time. I'm using the old version at the moment, which actually takes a little bit longer to select the right skin tone. The new version is a lot quicker. Once I've got it loaded up, I'm going to spend some time in isolating as much of the skin area as I can. Just a minute or so doing this, I know is going to pay off in the end. And there we go. This plugin has the ability to smooth the skin to the nth degree till it looks really, really fake. So I, you know, I'm all about subtlety. So I'll dial it back to at least 50%. And there we go. I just love what this plugin does to skin tones in video. It subtly smooths out lines, um, things like bags under the eyes and blemishes. It's I just love it. So again, here is our before, looking very flat and S-Log 2-ish. And then bam, we add our grade and I really like the way this looks. Super accurate skin tones with lovely roll off from our key light. Our skin looks both smooth, but the image is still sharp. But whoa, Harv, what about S-Log 3? Don't worry, I didn't forget. The process is very similar to the way I exposed S-Log2. I kept my settings all the same, but just when I came to the grade, all I needed was just a slightly deeper S-curve on my Color Curves plugin. Once I'd added the grade, again, I was super happy with the results. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. 
As always, I've loved making this video for you guys. If you're still in the mood for more dope videos about video, I've made loads. And I'll pop a couple of interesting ones just here for you. And if you're not subscribed, hit this blob thing right here. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.